Hey guys, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a health bar for your enemies. I'll show you the full setup from start to finish. We will also make it so that the health bar can drain smoothly, and we'll also add an option to change the health bar's color based on the amount of health left. For example, green when your health is totally full, yellow when you're in the middle, and red when it's nearly empty. Let's get started. Okay, so here's our opening scene. It's pretty basic stuff. We have a player and an enemy, and we have the ability to damage the enemy, but I would like to know how much health the enemy has left. So let's give him a health bar. So the first thing we're going to do is add a canvas to our enemy. Let's call that health bar canvas. Let's change the canvas to world space. I'm going to zero out the position X and the position Y. And I'm going to change the scale on the X and Y to 0 0.002. And I'm going to change the width to something like 1500. And let's make the height 275. Let's bring it up just above the enemy's head there. There we go. Now let's right click that and go down to UI and add an image. And we'll call that health bar image. So right down here in the source image, I'd like to search for square. And if nothing shows up when you search that, just click this little icon right here, and that should make some squares show up. All right, let's click on this up here. And we're gonna go down here and we're gonna hold Shift, Alt, and click on that. By holding Shift, we're gonna set our pivot, and by holding Alt, we're also setting our position. Next, I wanna change the image type to filled. And now you've got a couple of options here. You can see with radial 360 that that goes around that way. I just want to do horizontal from the left. Now we can just control it like this. Perfect, so now I'm gonna set up a new script called health bar. And I'm going to add that to our health bar image. So essentially, I want to be able to access this fill amount property with code so that we can manipulate it. So I'm going to need a reference to our image component. So before we can do that, let's go up here and say using unity engine.ui. Now we'll actually be able to access things like image. So let's set up a private image called image. And let's create a start function and grab that in there. Okay, so now let's actually set up the method that will update the health bar's fill amount. So we're gonna create a public void update health bar. Now we're gonna need access to two floats. One is going to be the max health of the enemy that we are calling this on, and the other is going to be their current health. And that's just because our fill amount is a number from one when it's full to zero when it's empty. So in order to do that, we can say image.fillamount is equal to current health divided by max health, which will return a decimal place between zero and one. Now let's set this to a nice red color and let's go to our enemy and open our enemy health script. And we should be updating the health bar every single time that the enemy takes damage. So let's grab a reference to our health bar component. We'll go up here and say private health bar called health bar. And in our start function, let's say that is equal to get component in children health bar. We know that we need to do get component in children instead of just get component because the health bar is sitting right here on the health bar image, which is a child of the canvas, which is a child of the enemy. So finally down here, we can say health bar dot update health bar. What's our max health? Well, it's our enemy's max health and our current health is equal to the enemy's current health. Okay, let's make sure that's working. Awesome. By the way, if you are not working in 2D and you are working in 3D, then you are also going to need to turn your health bar towards the camera so that it's always facing the camera so that you can always see it and you never wind up, you know, where you can only see a sliver like this or something. And I am not working in 3D, but if we were, what we would want to do in health bar is we would want to add an update function and we would want to say transform.rotation is equal to quaternion.lookrotation and take the health bar's transform.position minus our main camera's transform dot position. And we would just set up a camera up here. And we would say camera equals camera dot main once in start right there. Okay, but I am gonna get rid of that because we are working in 2D. What I would like to do next is make it so that our health bar actually goes down smoothly instead of just abruptly and immediately like that. So let's give it a time to actually drain. So let's say serialized field, private float, time to drain. Let's default that to 0 0.25. I'm also going to need to set up a private float called target. And if you know me, you know how much I love coroutines, so I'm going to do this through a coroutine. So let's set up a private coroutine, drain health bar coroutine. Okay, so to do that, let's go down here and say private I enumerator drain health bar. So let's set up a float called elapsed time. 
and let's create a while loop while the elapsed time is less than our time to drain. Well, then we're going to say elapsed time plus equals time dot delta time yield return null, which means wait for the next frame. And finally down here, let's actually change the fill amount. So let's say image dot fill amount is equal to math f dot lerp. So we're going to lerp between A and B by a certain amount of time. So what is A? Well, A is our current fill amount. So let's grab that right here. Float fill amount is equal to image.fill amount. Let's grab that once up here. And now we can reference that here as the A. B is going to be our target, which we are not updating yet, because now that we're actually going to change the fill amount in our coroutine, we don't want to do that here in update health bar anymore. What we want to do is update our target by that amount instead. And now down here, we can plug in the target for our B. And for time, let's give it some brackets and say elapsed time divided by time to drain. Okay, and then finally let's grab this, go into update health bar and say that is equal to start coroutine drain health bar. So because we are lerping from our current fill amount to a target fill amount, and we're doing that every frame because this waits for the next frame, and our elapsed time is updating every single frame, we're able to control exactly in seconds how long we want this fill to take, which is awesome. And as we said, it's going to take exactly 0.25 seconds. So let's make sure that's working. Beautiful. Okay, and last thing as a bonus, let's go up here and let's add a gradient so that we can control the color of the health bar based on how much health we have. So what we're gonna do first is say serialize field, private gradient, let's call that health bar gradient. And before we do anything else, let's actually set up those colors. Okay, so now we have this nice gradient here. So what I would like to do is be setting this from a nice green when it's full down to a red when it's empty and right here in the middle and i want this at exactly 50 percent so i'm going to widen this to make that easier okay so right there in the middle i'm going to make this a nice bright yellow so we go from green to yellow to red one to zero and we are going to be setting the color based on this gradient so this color here no longer really matters so i'm just going to make that white so what i want to do first is go down here and set up a new method called check health bar gradient amount and so we'll say our image.color is equal to the health bar gradient dot evaluate. And it wants a time between zero and one. Well, that's kind of perfect because we have our target right here, which is taking our current health divided by our max health. So that will only ever be a value between zero and one. So let's plug in our target. Okay, so we're actually going to want to call that right up in the start function so that we properly set the color of the health bar. And we're also going to want to do that down here in update health bar. And one last thing, this target is being updated right here, but this is not called until we actually take damage. And yet this is being called right in the start function, which means that I should initialize this target value. So what I'm actually going to do is just default this to one. That way, when we first call this, it's actually going to plug in the full one value right here, which will give us a green return color. So let's test this really quick. So it starts off green goes down to a yellow and starts to turn orange and then goes down to red. Awesome. However, this isn't actually how I want it to work because this is changing the color instantaneously and I would like to add it to this coroutine here so that it also lerps the color smoothly like we're doing with the actual fill amount. So let's set up a new color variable up here. We'll call that private color and we'll call it new health bar color. Okay, so let's grab that and down here, instead of setting the image.color directly, we're going to assign this color to new health bar color. Okay, and then we're gonna change some stuff in here, but first we need to go up here. This is no longer actually setting the color amount. So what I'm actually just gonna do is manually set that right here. Image.color is equal to health bar gradient dot evaluate, and we can plug in our target. That's going to be one at the very beginning, which is totally fine. Okay, so now we're actually updating this new health bar color every single time we take damage. So I went ahead and added a color variable in here, called it current color, and made that equal to our image.color. And we need our current color before the while loop because we're going to do another lerp for the color in here. Okay, so we're gonna say image.color is equal to color dot lerp. And what's our color A? Well, that is our current color. And B is our new health color. And our time is going to be our elapsed time divided by our time to drain. And I'm gonna slow this down just a little bit so it's easier to see. Starts off a nice green. 
and you can see it smoothly changing color over time. Awesome. There you go, guys. That's all I got for you. Thank you so much for choosing this video to learn how to add health bars to your enemy. By the way, if you like the assets that you see in this tutorial, I will leave a link down below in the description. You can download them for free and you can use them personally or commercially. It's totally up to you. I really want YouTube to like me more and I wanted to share these videos with more people. So if you found this video helpful, then please give it a like and consider subscribing. I hope that you have an awesome day. Bye.